I don't even know if Brother Kenneth Copeland even goes to God for anything at this point. He might just go to his checkbook. He might just go to his bank. I wanted to get a good laugh out. And we're going to talk about this Kenneth Copeland and his ministry and what he's got going on. Apparently, he's got a big ministry and it's 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 widely known. And I didn't grow up watching this ministry. I really didn't grow up knowing too much about Kenneth Copeland. I kind of grew up on the T.D. Jakes, Bishop Noel Jones. You know, if you know those people, I grew up on that side. So I didn't really know too much of Kenneth Copeland. But if you really look at him, if I could just be honest, when I've just been looking at some of his clips, some of his interviews and some of the things I'm getting ready to show you here in just a moment. If you really look at this guy, in my humble opinion, it almost looks as though if Satan would be in physical form preaching the word of God, this is exactly what it would look like. He's almost mocking. The word of God, you know how in church people talk about laying hands and, you know, speaking life into things and, you know, power of life and death, you know, is in the tongue. So people breathe life into their situation, breathe life into their circumstances, you know, and to get a good outcome out of it. Well, the way he does it, if you just look at this clip, I'm getting ready to show you. It almost seems as though and correct me if I'm wrong, if you're, you know, bold enough to do so. It almost seems as though that he is mocking the power within the tongue that we've been given. Let's check this out. No spots, I call you gone. Hair grow. Hair grow. <laughs> the gentleman there at the end almost looked like <laughs> he didn't believe it. You know, he's got all the gentlemen in his uh, congregation here telling him to lay hands on their head, screaming, hair grow, hair grow, hair grow. And the way he's saying it and in doing it, he's laughing it, and, and, and he's laughing. And when he does that, it don't to me, it just makes it seem like he's laughing. This is what I would envision the devil doing. This is exactly what I would envision the devil doing, like mocking the ability to heal yourself in Jesus name by laughing in the face of those who are doing it. This is exactly what I would think. That's what I took from this. Honestly, that's what I took from it. It doesn't feel right to me. It doesn't seem right to me. And even the gentleman at the end there of that video, you're going to see it again. The gentleman there at the end, he always makes me laugh because it's like he was so into it until he wasn't. You know, it's it's like you, in the beginning, OK, he's teaching this good message about laying hands. We're feeling it. You know, let's go ahead. Let's get ready to prophesy over our lives, over our circumstances, over our bald heads. <laughs> so, OK, I can understand how you're getting it for a little bit. OK, you, you, you riding for the ride. But then even that gentleman that I said at the end of this clip, you can see it in his face, man. He believed it until he didn't believe it. Because I feel that even him, he realized that, you know what, this seems a little blasphemous right now. This seems a little, th this seems uncomfortable, feels uncomfortable. Let's run that back. Make sure you're watching it. Let's check this out again. Ball spots, I call you gone. <laughs> it's like once he realized the camera was on him i have to go back man it's like once he realized the camera was on him he could not keep up with it anymore it's almost like maybe they had a reverse camera film on him or something so he could see his face on the big screen and it's like bro what am i doing what am i doing what is this like literally what is this you know what i mean like, like gotta run it back <laughs> that's too good man that's too good that is classic this, this is this is terrible though man this is very terrible i like like i said all the laughing that he's doing in their face i really just feel like this was just him mocking it's mockery 
you know, because on the flip side, you know, they teach these messages and they 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 teach and come with these sermons, you know, that I don't even think that they truly believe what they're saying, but it doesn't match up with the lifestyle that they live outside of the church, you know, and then you tend to have a lot of people suffering in the church. And a lot of these people go to these churches because these people have really good names. So they're really looking for like an ultimate blessing. It's almost like they see it as, well, God has blessed these people tremendously. So I want to go and be under their ministry. And I want to go and be there at that church because I want to be blessed. I, I want some of the remnants off of that man's blessing, you know, to come into my life. And, and people do that and they find themselves in these positions. But I, I would like to believe that just like in any other church, even in these mega churches, there's people in the congregation that are suffering that need certain things. And they might need a little bit more than just a word. And I feel that if the church is in a position to help and the church is in a position to provide those things, which I definitely think they are, because this guy's known to be worth millions, you know, has a net worth of millions, you know, you know, just as, as, as a man of God, you know, and a lot of people, there's a lot of debate on that, whether that's right, whether that's wrong, you know, and I don't really know what side I'm on when it comes to that, because it's like, I do believe that God definitely calls us to a certain level of abundance. So that's what I'll say there. Like there's a certain level. Um, but I definitely, you know, realize and can see and believe that there can be some greed taking place here, you know, because where does it all go to? You know, there's another clip where you had an interview where people were really pressing him on that because people are starting to have questions and concerns of, you know, we understand that, you know, the church can provide you a salary and, you know, you are doing ministry full time. So of course there will be some sort of a compensation. I get it. You have bills to pay just like anybody else. And to carry out ministry full time, it requires your full attention. Might not really have time for another full time nine to five job elsewhere. So I understand that ministers and pastors receive compensation for what they do in the ministry, but people were starting to really question how much is enough, you know what I mean? Or how much is too much, you know, because these pastors and these leaders are living lavish lives, you know, um, and it's not that we want you to live like some poor, you know, you know, impoverished life. But like I said, and just like other people are asking, how much is too much? So you had this interview that's really been going around the Internet for a very long time where he was questioned, you know, about his jets and the purchases that he makes. And we understand, you know, that you've got a lot of money and there's a lot of purchases that he makes that are really kind of, I guess you could say, selfish purchases. They don't really have anything to do with the ministry, but. In this interview here, he definitely, in a very scary way, and you're going to see this, tries to connect it to the use of the ministry when it really just kind of seems like it's a lifestyle that he's building for himself, um, that he's kind of just writing off through the ministry. Let's check this clip out. Very simple. It takes a lot of money to do what we do. And I was scheduled for Peru. And I prayed about it, and I thought, I'm not missing that dedication in Jerusalem without the airplane that we have that I bought from Tyler Perry. And I didn't pay anywhere. And Tyler's one of the greatest guys. He made it. He made that airplane so cheap for me, I couldn't help but buy it. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. People, I love people. Jesus loves people. Do you think the Jewish people believe you should be broke? All right. Starring next week, and who is he going to kill next? You know, rated R film. Mature audience only. Kenneth Copeland, get your tickets now on Fandango.com. <laughs> but uh, no, this is completely creepy. This is very uncomfortable. And to think that, and I've done videos before on Tyler Perry and, and what he does and, and, and his connection in and, and kind of his loop and how he gave Tyler Perry a million dollars that one time. And, and it's just, it, it's, it's a very quiet circle that I think that's going on in the Christian community that is not really comfortable, man. I don't think these people have the most genuine, you know what I mean, uh, approach and interest in the kingdom the way that they should. But uh, he's pointing out how he went in prayer that he wanted to go to Peru, uh, I believe, or he had a calling in Peru and he wasn't going to miss that, the, 
the thing that he was going to go to in Jerusalem that he said. And 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 it, it I feel that when he said he prayed, he he said himself and we're going to run that back so you can see it, because I don't really want to misquote this. But he was saying himself that he is not going to miss it. So it's like he prayed, you didn't even get an answer from God. You know what I mean? So it's like, not only is what he's saying, if you really do have the spirit of God, you can dissect and you have a discernment enough to be able to read all through that. But also how uncomfortable he is being, like his demeanor, his disposition towards this person who's interviewing him, it's uncomfortable, it's abrasive, it's scary, it, it, it's not demonstrating anything of Christ. So to be a messenger of Christ and to reap the benefits of those who, you know, spread the good news, beautiful are the feet of those who spread the gospel. So to to embrace upon that, you need to be representing Christ the right way. And that's the problem in this. So you can't, you can use any fancy words, you can use whatever jibber jabberish that a lot of these people use in today's society to justify the actions that they're doing in the church. You can do that all you want, but it doesn't erase the fact that the truth still remains, bro. There is something going on with this man, and there is definitely an evil work that is taking place. Let's check this out again. Very simple. It takes a lot of money to do what we do. And I was scheduled for Peru. And I prayed about it and I thought, I'm not missing that dedication in Jerusalem without the airplane that we have that I bought from Tyler Perry. And I didn't pay anywhere. And Tyler's one of the greatest guys. He made it. He made that airplane so cheap for me, I couldn't help but buy it. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. Like, bro, why, why does he need to be, why is it, don't you ever, why does he have to get so aggressive? Like, what, what is going on? You know what I mean? And for people to still be sitting in that congregation after seeing this stuff, that's also the scary part. Because there's so many followers of this right here. There's so many people that are receiving this doctrine from these kinds of leaders that are behaving this kind of way. And that's a scary thing because it's almost like the Christian community is just going to get divided and divided and divided more and more and more because there's too many people being led astray. That's a sad reality, man. That is a sad reality reality i pray for the people that are under the kenneth copeland ministry and i pray even for brother kenneth copeland that he be healed from whatever it is that he might be going through in his mind you know his desires greed whatever the case may be whatever's going on you know we're all capable to you know do these things we're all capable to make these mistakes you know what i mean like but I just pray for this gentleman that his eyes be open. Something happened that there be a shift, you know, and that goes for a lot of these ministries that have greed and have a lot of just negative things going on because the leaders have just kind of lost sight of God. And that's kind of what happens in the beginning. Things are great. And that's kind of when a lot of people start tagging along. And the ministry is great. In the beginning, things are really great. The vision's clear. It's nice. It's awesome. But over time, as all the success starts to come in and then all the people say, oh, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. But it's really kind of just all the money, you know, disguising as blessings. But it's just all the money providing them so many opportunity and so many chances where it's like, I don't even know if Brother Kenneth Copeland even goes to God for anything at this point. He might just go to his checkbook. He might just go to his bank. You know, so that's the problem where it's like over time, I feel that a lot of the leaders when it comes to fame and fortunes and riches and things like that, they start to leave God alone and the money really does become their God. You know what I mean? And that's why the Bible talks about the love of money. People always try to correct Christians and be like, oh, well, doesn't the Bible say that, you know, uh, money is the root of all evil? The love of money is the root of all evil. Having money doesn't make you evil. Even being successful in life and you might have a job where you have a great career and you have a great salary and your family lives well, that's not evil. But the love of it is evil. Why? Because it will cause you to do evil things. That brings me back to the question that a lot of people have about this guy's ministry. How much is too much? When is enough enough? And when are we going to start taking all the fundings and all this extra money we have 
and put it into the people that have been dedicated to the ministry for years. Maybe help pay a couple people's houses off, you know, donate a couple of cars to families in need, whatever the case may be, pay for a couple of people's college tuitions. I don't know if they're not doing this. I'm not saying that they're not. I don't know if they are, but I'm just saying that a lot of churches, I feel that the mega churches should focus on that. I know that when I was heavily involved in some mega churches, it was interesting because a lot of the funding went to like Africa building and just other places. And I understand that other places need help. I'm not saying to neglect those places, but I feel that those missions are more so charitable tax, you know, donations and write offs as opposed to just helping the people that are right here in need right in front of your face, you know, so. But that's another topic for another time. But that's all I got for you guys on this one, man. Pray for Brother Kenneth Copeland. I appreciate it if you guys have stayed this long. To the next one, guys. I'm out.